So Disney has been buying acres and acres of land near Walt Disney World this past year. And whenever they do, I always get the same question of what is it for? So in today's video, I'm gonna aim to answer that question and potentially provide a little bit more insight regarding what that land's purpose might be. So let's dive into all of that up next. Hi there Waltoners, I'm Jack and this is of course DSMI Newscast. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe down below if you're new to this channel, hit that notification bell and also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at DSMI Newscast so therefore you never miss out on the latest breaking news and also posts like this. But anyways, now let's get into today's topic. As at some point when planning a visit to Walt Disney World, you've probably heard it mentioned on a vacation planning DVD that the resort is roughly twice the size of Manhattan. And well, despite that statement being completely true. You'd also be forgiven for thinking that the entirety of that 38 square miles has Disney's indelible stamp on every square inch. Whereas in actual fact, as you can see with this map, the majority of the land that Disney owns in Central Florida is currently assigned to undeveloped or open space that falls under the jurisdiction of the Reedy Creek Improvement District. Now for the purpose of this video, all you need to know is that the Reedy Creek Improvement District is the municipality that governs Walt Disney World property and the board is operated by Disney employees. But there's way too much to dive into regarding the Reedy Creek Improvement District at this point, so I'm going to leave a link down below in the description box to a friend of the channel, Rob Plays' video, on this topic titled Reedy Creek Improvement District, Disney's Government. That gives a great in-depth history and explanation that I recommend checking out if you want to learn more. But the reason why it's so important to learn about the Reedy Creek Improvement District is because it holds the key to understanding how Disney develops new areas. And in the past couple of years, Disney's been on a bit of a spending spree when it comes to acquiring new land. As the company has purchased a total of 2,801 acres of nearby land within the last 18 months alone. With this being divided up across four transactions through Disney subsidiaries that roughly bring the total to $41 million. However, the land is not all within the same location, but instead 2,540 acres has been bought southwest of the Celebration community, and then 261.4 acres has been bought west of Disney's Grand Floridian and Bay Lake. Now, on all of these occasions, Disney has declined to comment on what the land is going to be used for. But property experts and evaluators have explained that it will most likely be used for conservation and water management purposes. And that perfectly aligns with the 2020 edition of the RCID Comprehensive Plan. As it was as far back as 2010 that the Reedy Creek Improvement District outlined that 30% of all land within the district should be set aside for open space, with this not including the wildlife management conservation area. Now at this point you're probably wondering to yourself why would Disney self-impose a 30% target for undeveloped open space? And there are two possible reasons, with the first being that it could act as a buffer to prevent other operations encroaching too close to Disney property and keeping that Disney bubble intact. But then the second reason is for the overall conservation ratio to ensure that the land remains balanced and controlled. As the high water table in Florida combined with the insufficient quality of the land that often requires a long period of grading for the land means that 64% of all of the undeveloped land is actually unsuitable for development. So for Disney to develop areas which are deemed stable and nearby existing infrastructure which is prime real estate, they also need to acquire more land further out to offset that future development whilst remaining within their 30% target. Now every time one of these purchases are made, it's always met with the same flurry of articles hinting at a future expansion at Walt Disney World and potentially a fifth park. But the truth is that these land purchases are most likely not for one big future development like a fifth park but is instead so Disney has the freedom to expand in multiple locations that were previously designated as conservation space much closer to the existing parks. As for example, the 2,540 acres southwest of Celebration is too far away from Disney to be used for a Walt Disney World expansion as it would require too much transportation infrastructure to connect it to the rest of the resort. But instead it could function as a way to both offset that open space requirement and leave it mostly as open space, all whilst in conjunction with it possibly being used to relocate or expand the existing energy, water, waste and recycling operations at a later stage 
importantly freeing up some vital land right in the centre of the resort that could be used for exciting new projects. But the more interesting land purchase has got to be the 261.4 acres that's not that far away from the heart of Walt Disney World. As many jumped to the conclusion that this land might be used directly for a fifth park, or used to offset a development of a fifth park somewhere else on property. As the popular theory works from the assumption that because the other four parks are roughly between 200 to 300 acres in size, then these 261 acres would make for an equal exchange somewhere else on property. But the problem with that thinking is that Disney has more than enough suitably graded land to expand to a fifth park if they ever wanted to at some point in the future. So the fact that the land purchase is 261 acres is most likely coincidental and not related to a fifth park. As despite Universal constructing their third park in Epic Universe just down the road, if you especially consider the current economic climate, then a fifth park is most likely out of the realm of possibility for quite a while. So what could this 261.4 acre plot be used for? As its location interestingly fills in a missing piece of a land jigsaw puzzle close to two other Disney properties. The first being Disney's Magnolia Golf Course, and the second being the 270 acre Disney Solar Facility. Now logically, I would say that this land will be used to expand the solar facility. With the main reason for this being that Disney have made clear their intentions to be environmentally sustainable by producing 50 megawatts of renewable energy from their existing 270 watt acre facility that began operating in 2019. However, that facility only produces enough energy to power two of the four theme parks. Therefore, with an additional 261 acres added to that existing facility, they could easily double their production to 100 megawatts, meaning that all four theme parks at Walt Disney World become carbon neutral. And then perhaps a further goal of the company with the other land purchases around the area is to reach a global carbon neutrality status, much like Apple and Google. Now yes, I know that a solar farm isn't the most exciting concept, but it would make Disney way more efficient in the long term and better positioned to weather tough economic climates like Disney is currently finding itself within relating to COVID-19. Then the second and potentially more exciting use for the 261 acres is relating to the Magnolia Golf Course, as it was extremely interesting that Disney spent an additional $1 million for only 26.4 acres on the Reedy Lake waterfront right here, at the staggering cost of $39,700 per acre. So the very fact that Disney is spending so much money on this additional acreage may hint at a future expansion to the Magnolia Golf Course, which could subsequently free up some extremely valuable land not that far away from Bay Lake, as potentially reclaiming some of that land that's conveniently opposite the Grand Floridian and the Polynesian Resort. It would be a perfect location for a future hotel or resort development, very close to Bay Lake and the existing transportation infrastructure. But of course, all of that is just logical speculation for the time being. But now, it's over to you, the Waltoners. I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions about Disney's recent land purchase of 2,801.4 acres. And most importantly, considering that we talked all about the realistic scenario in this video, what would you like to see Disney do with all of that additional land if the sky was the limit? And of course, don't forget to put the timestamp for where the hidden Mickey appeared somewhere in this video along with your suggestion or your comment to be on the chance to win one of these official DSMY newscast enamel pins. And congratulations to this Waltoneer here for winning this suggestion from a previous video where we were talking all about the current state of construction at Walt Disney World. And so that's it for today, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe down below if you're new to this channel, hit that notification icon so that you always receive an update whenever I release a new video, and also if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up as it really does help this channel out. And I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.